Hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Hutto, as probably you all know by now. I talk to you every once in a while on a video. Uh, I serve care partners on their journey. Uh, and I had planned today to talk about laughter as being good medicine. I had wanted to be silly and bring joy uh, to your life and every care partner's life, if, if that's possible. I think it is. But I realized it's just not appropriate right now. I have talked to several uh, of you uh, caregivers in the past week, and there have been several posts in my private Facebook group about uh, people's loved ones being uh, fast approaching death. And so the suffering is great. The, the loved ones are uh, having no appetite or nearly absolutely refusing food. They're depressed and their sleep is very prolonged. Uh, the list goes on. So you, what does this do, of course, for a care partner? It's, it's grueling. This very end of the caring journey is really, really heart-wrenching. Uh, caregivers are so challenged at this stage. They're filled with anxiety and they're questioning and doubting themselves every step of the way. Some care partners that I've talked to recently have, they feel a little guilty about this, but they actually are admitting that they have been praying for their loved one to be taken now, to be released from their suffering now. How can this continue on? It's just not fair. And this idea of wanting our loved ones to be out of suffering is of course human, right? Uh, why not? But we don't have control over it, and we all know that. So what can we do as a caregiver when we get to this point on the caring journey? Or, or for the rest of us, any point in our life that is a crisis or that we're being called upon to really step up to the plate, be rooted and calm. And so what we can do, I think the most essential practice is to maintain an awareness of our own body, mind, and heart. And if you are able to do this, you will be lending a part of yourself to that person that you love, even if that person is approaching death and the situation seems so grim, they can absolutely feel your strength and your sense of calm and your open heart. And, and this will be the nourishment. If they don't need food in their mouths right now, they need other food and you can give it to them with your open heart and your sense of rootedness. And our calmness is absolutely not only a model for that person, but all other human beings. And so there's a good reason for each of us to practice this every day because we will all be faced with a situation where we need to be fully rooted calm as all get out and, um, and feeling as though we have roots going deep into the earth that we cannot be knocked over from anything that comes our way. And I've always talked about breathing deeply as being a very good practice and, and it is. And at the bottom of each breath, which I haven't talked about, there is something called the gap. The gap between that uh, exhale and that split second before we take the inhale. And that is a place where we are, uh, we have come home, we have arrived. I take a, a Tai Chi sword class from a wonderful um, Tai Chi and Qi Kung teacher here in my local town. Her name is Ruby Aver, and she has a Facebook page. Uh, that I hope you will check out. Her organization is called Moving With Change, and she is just wonderful. And so I'm going to talk to you for a moment about the things that I've learned from Ruby uh, in terms of coming home. And she, 
she actually uses this term of arriving because uh, Ruby talks about taking a step. If we take, if we are on one leg with all the weight in one leg and we pick up the other leg and we're about to take that step, before you put weight on the second leg, just say, I have arrived. This is that gap. I am home. And it's been very, very powerful for me, this idea of coming home and coming home and arriving and arriving. Uh, someday, maybe I can get Ruby to uh, come on here with me and we could uh, talk to you about um, this, more about this arriving home and, and emptying our energy and bringing in fresh energy, which is as, um, as Ruby and everyone else refers to it to chi, that's our chi. But uh, when we have arrived, then we can take the next step. And when I practice this, I do come home to myself. It's that place where I feel safe and my heart is open. It's the place where we all can be. It's present moment. And we often don't like to um, be home. I think it makes us nervous. We, we uh, want to run and keep moving, but it's okay. It's okay to take that break, that split second break. And so we can all do this because once we begin to practice these um, exercises of moving with our breath, these ways of coming home, these ways of um, being in an open heart and feeling safe. Our body remembers the more we do it, the less we have to think about doing it, which is fantastic. So I invite you all, everyone, whether you're a caregiver or not, someday you may be one. Let's practice this now, this idea of coming home to ourselves creating an open heart and a still mind so that we're ready no matter what comes our way. And I, I hope that this has been uh, a little bit of a gold nugget for those of you who are struggling so much with the end of your caring journey. I invite any of you at any time to reach out to me. You can do that on my website CherylHutto.com. I also invite you, if you're a caregiver, to join my, my private Facebook group called Confidence for Caregivers, where there are hundreds of us supporting and getting support, serving one another um, in community. And it's so important. Thank you for watching. And uh, maybe next time we can laugh. Thanks again.